Just head on over to Super Talk TV. Rhino, is this a song from a movie? I believe it plays in one scene in the uh, number one movie from the weekend. So what's the number one movie from the weekend, Tanya? Despicable Me. Ah, okay. Yeah, I could see that. I didn't hear it or don't know yeah, where it was in the t- movie. You can totally see Minions having a little, a little fun. fun with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good deal. I was like, did he forget the assignment for Friday? And then I was like, no, it's probably snuck in there somewhere so it's still on top it is and i saw an interview this week with joey king who is also in the the streaming movie that we talked a little bit about last week a family affair and she has a picture of her as a child with a minion oh and then now she's the voice she was the voice of the team that's cool in the new one so yeah i'm like i bet she never dreamed that she would be in one of those movies oh i know that's really cool in that way well it's on top and I still highly encourage, if you hadn't seen it and you think your family would enjoy a movie together, go go see it. Definitely. Yeah. It's fun and a great way to beat the heat. Mm-hmm. But what else is new if we've already seen it? Yeah, so the big new release this weekend has two mega stars. Um, we've got Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum. It's called Fly Me to the Moon. Mm-hmm. And this is a sort of a romantic comedy, a little bit of history, um, and... A little bit of drama all wrapped into one movie, PG-13. I saw it last night with my husband, and we both really enjoyed it. It's a little different, um, but I loved just the view. I mean, it's set in the late 60s, centers around the Apollo 11 mission. Excuse me. And... um, Scarlett is a big time New York uh, advertising exec. Think of um, John Draper, a female Don Draper, Mm -hmm. and she's the best at what she does. And they recruit her to come sell NASA to the country, basically. At this point in NASA's life, people were kind of disenchanted. They'd had some failed missions and some other things that had gone wrong, tragedies. And people just weren't on board with sending a man to the moon. Uh, The Soviets had already gotten somebody up there or gotten a satellite placed. And so they kind of felt like, you know, why are we doing this? And so her job was to get the American public behind NASA. And she did anything she could to make that happen. And then Channing Tatum plays the, uh, he's in charge of the flight deck. Um, And, of course, they... Butt heads, but they're secretly kind of falling in love. Um, but it's not true. It, the, the story pokes fun at some of the conspiracy theories we've always heard about regarding the landing on the moon. Um, so there is part of it's factual. You've got Neil Armstrong, you know, you've got the main people there, mm-hmm. but the people that we're watching, investing in in this movie are all fictional. Loosely based on real people, but not really. Gotcha. But it's still an enjoyable time. Yes, I thought I enjoyed it because it is a long one. It's, you know, a solid two hours, which doesn't always happen these days, especially a movie like this. But I enjoyed it because it was just different. It was like I've never seen anything like this. Um, And the plot twist, I mean, the plot had some twists that I wasn't expecting. So I really enjoyed that. But the standout for me is the actor Jim Rash. If you watch Community, you know him. He played the Dean. He's one of those actors that shows up in a lot of movies and television shows that is just so funny. And he steals the show in this one, too. But he plays a director and um, kind of a sidebar on the the plot. And I'm not spoiling because you see this in the trailer is that just in case things don't go right, Mm -hmm. With the moon landing, they decide to stage a landing and film it to show the American public because they don't want to show them bad news. And so he's hired to direct this fake moon landing. And he is hilarious. He won me over immediately because he comes through the room complaining about something that had happened on a movie or a TV commercial uh, set. And he pops up in a tab and he's drinking his tab And uh, that was like his one demand for uh, doing this, taking this job was he had to have a a refrigerator full of tab. 
And I thought that was funny. You just took some folks back. I know. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a whole movement out there trying to bring Tab back. And if you go to the World of Coke in Atlanta, say, who, you can who try owns it. Tab? Yeah, it's Coke, but they just don't produce it anymore. So, um, but you can still try it at the World of Coca Cola. I feel like they that's an opportunity for a small, like a limited series. Yes, and that's watch a, folks go crazy. That's and, exactly what I said as we were walking away. I'm like, they really need to put some tab in motion over this movie. That'd be a great promo. Yeah, that'd be really cool. So, I mean, you date night, anybody? Yeah, I think it's a perfect date movie. Uh, and even like a girls' night out. Um, Guys, I think, would even like it just because of the NASA, the mm-hmm. the space stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, definitely recommend it. I, I just felt like it was just kind of a little reset on just an interesting, unique movie I had not seen before. And if you don't have that, what else? I mean, yeah. you don't want to do that. Well, your other option, if you want to go to the theater um, to see something new is a, the latest horror movie oh, <laughs> called Long Legs. Really? There is? <laughs> no. Um, is that spiders? It's not spiders. It's, a, you know, just a fun family serial killer. Okay. And he does. He goes after families. So this that, is terrible. I know. It's rated R. For a reason. But the cool thing is he goes for people that have, like, the same birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> Just really weird, but yeah, I mean that's pretty much all. Nicholas Cage is in it. I mean, do these things do well? Do they at least break even? I think they do, and I think that's why there's one every weekend because the budgets are so sl- so small, small, and they usually have a lot of uh, younger talent, not as well known, not all the time, but often. So a lot of times that helps with the budget, and then they can make it back pretty fast. I just don't get it. I, I mean, know. what are they going to say for when it's actually creepy season? I know. And that's what I guess they're too worried about saturating on Halloween. So they just release them during the week. They're getting out of the I way mean, of you're... Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yes. Nobody is going to go up against that one. No, and I've seen the trailer and it's just awesome. Like, I'm just yeah. excited. I hope that I hope it holds up to its um, all that it is, like all that you hope that it would be. I think it will. You know, we're seeing more and more of these sequels that are decades later and well, I appreciate that's the that way to do it. Michael Keaton's coming back. Mm-hmm. I mean, so it's like that gives it hope that you know, the, as the viewer, that it's not a different Beetlejuice. Yeah. So and if you're going to continue that story, it needs to be the same kind of. Yeah, and usually when you have actors that commit, um, you know, that were that love the first movie just as much as the audience. That usually tells you it's a good uh, script. So, and I still am halfway excited for Gladiator, but I'm still sad there's not a crow sighting. Yeah, you know, I saw. Stop laughing at me, Rana. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm, he's dead, but still. I know that Gladiator is um, going to be up against Wicked, but I think they maybe have done a little shuffling. I think they're going to release Wicked maybe a week earlier. To try to keep from... I finally saw that full trailer when we went to see Despicable Me. It's not what I expected it to be, so I'm more in, inclined to maybe be interested in it than I was previously. Maybe. Yeah, I think you'll love it. It's just I'm not... I don't... Musicals are not really... Yeah, that thing. will be a strike for you, but <laughs> it's a great storyline. Yeah. I you know, think. it'll be interesting with them cutting it off. You know, and doing the other half next year. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. How do you how do you split that? I mean, I know the the musical itself is in two acts, but the majority of the songs people know are in the first act. Yeah, and I feel the same way. It's like there has, I, and I love it, and I like I said, I've seen it so many times. But I've thought before if I had to leave early, I would be okay with that because the first half is my favorite. Well, and you can't, with so many diehard fans out there, you can't add anything to the second. Like, you can't change it much. Yeah. Or bury any. You say yeah. that, but we got three Hobbit movies out of a kid's book. <laughs> Which I'm really excited about. There's the one for the other. That's why you don't read, Rano. That's why you're just, you're always, you're never disappointed when you, you just don't read. <laughs> <laughs> don't set yourself don't, up. Don't set yourself up for, for being disappointed. Live advice from Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. But, you know, if you do read this first, then sometimes you are let down if you have, if you like the book better. But there you go. Well, thank you, Tanya, for your time. And you guys stick with us. we got more for you coming up next.